Let's say you go to a bank to take an FD. There will be two major types of FDs to choose from. Cumulative FDs and non-cumulative FDs. Your banker may also inform you that the interest is compounded quarterly or yearly. I have taken the screenshot from the website of a leading bank in India. Below the interest rate table, they have mentioned at the bottom that the interest is compounded quarterly. This is from another bank where they have said interest will be compounded yearly only. This is an NBFC offering fixed deposits and they have mentioned interest rates at monthly rest. In today's video, we will discuss what these terms mean and how it will affect your investments. We will also learn how to calculate the future value for each of these cases. Starting with cumulative FD. In this, they will keep accumulating all the interest payments. That means you won't get the interest payments in your hand regularly. They will keep adding all the interest to the principal and will pay out the entire sum at the end of the maturity period. Here you can see the compounding effect come into play. The other is non-cumulative FD. In this, they will pay out the interest every month or every quarter based on what you requested. And at the end of the maturity period, you get back the principal as it is. Because they pay back the interest immediately, the question of paying interest on top of interest doesn't arise at all. So the concept of compounding is not applicable here. Much of this video is therefore related to cumulative FTs which we discussed earlier. Let's have a quick recap of future value and compounding which we discussed in the previous video. Future value is nothing but how much money you will get back in the future if you invest at a particular rate for a certain period of time with compounding interest. And compounding means we are adding interest to the principal and then calculating the interest on top of interest as well. We also discussed in the previous video that the generic format or shortcut to calculate future value which is one point rate to the power years. And the rate here should be in decimal format. If you haven't seen the video in which I discuss the shortcut in detail, please watch that before continuing this. The link is in the description below. It will help you understand the calculations easily. Taking the example of an investment at 9% per annum for 5 years, the calculation will be 1.09 to the power 5. Here, the rate of 9% is yearly rate and the power we have raised is number of years. The underlying assumption in this calculation is that compounding happens annually. We are essentially adding the interest to the principal only at the end of each year. The interest rate we take is the growth rate until each instance of compounding, which is the yearly rate of 9%. And this will happen 5 times in the life of the investment. So we raise by 5. We can calculate this on a calculator. 1.09 to the power 5 and you will get 1.538. So, 1 rupee will become 1.538 after 5 years. But if a bank says the interest will be compounded half yearly or at half yearly rests, both these terms mean the same. It means that they will add the interest to the principal after every 6 months. But in 6 months, you can't earn the entire 9%, right? What you will be getting is half of the 9%, which is 4.5% for every 6 months. And this will happen twice in a year. And that will be 5 into 2, 10 times in 5 years. You get the rate that is applicable for each period of compounding by dividing the annual rate by 2. And the number of periods or the number of times it gets compounded, you get it by multiplying it by 2. Now the formula becomes 1.045 to the power 10. Since all the numbers are now in terms of half years, the formula is correct and we can proceed with the calculation. So 1.045 to the power 10 becomes 1.553. If you remember, previously we got 1.538, now it is 1.55. Because we are compounding more number of times, the impact of compounding is also higher. Now, what if it's quarterly compounding? This means they are going to add the interest every 3 months. And this will happen 4 times in a year. And that will be 20 times in 5 years. The applicable interest rate here is the interest rate per quarter, which you get by dividing 9 by 4, which is 2.25%. Now the calculation will become 1.0225 to the power 20. Here the interest and number of periods or number of times the compounding happens are all in quarterly terms. So we can proceed with the calculation. Now you get 1.56. This time it's even higher. If it's monthly compounding, they will add the interest after every month 
and they will compound it 12 times in a year and 60 times in 5 years the rate will be 9 by 12 which is 0.75% per month this will result in a future value of 1.566 for every 1 rupee normally when nothing is mentioned it means the compounding will happen only once a year or annual compounding when we calculate irr or cagr or any form of returns or growth in general we always assume annual compounding annual growth is the gold standard in any financial calculation that's why by default we take annual rate and number of years in the formula but indian banks generally offer quarterly compounding so you will have to adjust the rate and period for calculation in any case when you take an fd it's better if you ask the banker about the frequency of compounding for better clarity but let's say you get a choice either 6% compounded annually or 6% compounded quarterly what will you pick straight away you can pick quarterly compounding as we discussed earlier growth will definitely be more when compounding happens more number of times what if you have a choice between 6.2% compounded quarterly and 6% compounded quarterly here again the compounding frequency is same in both cases so you can straight away pick the one with higher interest rate but what if they are offering 6.2% with annual compounding versus 6% with quarterly compounding now it's tricky you will have to calculate to see which one is better but if it's a 10 or 20 year investment period you don't have to calculate the future value till the end of the investment for the sake of comparison you can just calculate one year future value or the effective growth rate one year future value for this is straightforward 1.062 to the power 1 is 1.062 itself which is nothing but 6.2% as it is here we can calculate the one year future value 6 divided by 4 will be 1.5% quarterly so it will be 1.015 to the power 4 which is 1.0613 converting this back to percentage growth by removing the 1 and shifting the decimal two places backwards we get 6.13% so the first option is better this 6.13% is called the annualized growth rate or effective yield basically you have converted from quarterly compounding to the equivalent annual compounding rate what this means is that 6% with quarterly compounding is exactly same as getting 6.13% with annual compounding so the effective rate will adjust for the difference in compounding frequency and bring them all to annual compounding rate this is very helpful when you want to compare different schemes with different frequency of compounding the unadjusted rate which is quoted by the bank like the 6.2% or the 6% is called nominal rate nominal means whatever is mentioned on paper here there is no need to find out the annualized rate because it's already annual compounding annualized rate or effective rate makes sense only when the frequency is more than once in a year now let's go back to the nbfc's website they are mentioning here that the interest is compounded at monthly rests if we want to know the future value for this case we can take 8% which is the nominal rate divided by 12 to get the monthly nominal rate of 0.667% to convert it to decimal we will divide it by 100 and then add 1 now you get 1.00667 if you calculate the annualized rate what we discussed we will have to take the future value for one year which is to the power 12 and you get 1.083 this is nothing but 8.3% but they have mentioned 8.83% and that is absolutely wrong how they have calculated this is that they have taken the total interest which is 6100 minus 5000 the initial investment you get 1100 interest this is divided by 2.5 years because 30 months is 2 and a half years so it is 440 rupees per year on top of 5000 this comes to 8.8% This type of calculation makes sense only if they were giving you simple interest but simple interest is not applicable at all here it is a cumulative deposit which means they have to pay interest on the interest as well and it has to be compounded in all their internal calculations they will definitely be doing compounding but to the customers they show the simple interest calculation so don't get fooled by that and this is one more reason why it is really necessary to learn to do the calculation and do it yourself For today I hope that you learned something new and useful in this video. If you did please hit the like and subscribe button and see you in the next video.